Whether it will be patched later or not, but power shots are so overpowered in FC25. They are like the cheat code of goals in this game, because the ball moves very fast and hard, giving no chance for the opponent's goalkeeper to even try. To effectively score consistent power shots, first of all get a player with power shot playstyle gold or silver. These players' power shot shooting animation is somehow quicker than using a normal player without that playstyle. Then, after getting that player, for example, a cheap option is Rushford at around 20k coins, and you can even upgrade him through evolution. If you want cheap and safe and quick FC25 coins, visit IGGM.com. Use the discount code DRFC for 5% off. Check link in the description. Get that player and make sure you position him facing the opponent's goal. Power shots are very dangerous when your player is facing the opponent's goal. This increases the chances of your player hitting the target, and you know the goalkeeper has nothing to do about it. Then lastly, hold both the L1 plus R1 and press the shooting button, loading up three and half bars of power. Enough power is needed to elevate the ball and beat the opponent's goalkeeper, and sure he will have no chance. And make sure you aim directly at the goal side you want to shoot the ball to, because power shot is manual in terms of aiming, so make sure you aim very well on the target, and everything should work. In FC, 25 defenders recover quickly, and when you make that body contact, your players seem to have no choice but to give away the ball. It's pretty frustrating. But I tried many dribbling techniques, but later I realized it's hard to avoid body contact with the opponent's defenders. So I had to use the shield button, L2. As you see when you press the shield button, for example, here I'm sprinting, your player will use his hands to push away the opponent's defender. This makes it hard for that defender to initiate the physical contact with your player. But remember when you use this technique, your player will somehow slow down. So use it wisely because it's not an overall button to beat the opponent's defender. It's just to protect the ball for a short moment. Then after you immediately escape the situation. Just forget these long lob through balls which were effective in FC24, though they still work in FC25, but not as consistent as they were because of the new passing system in FC25. But still the lob through pass is effective, but for me it's better using around the opponent's box. Yes, the final third, it's a very good position where this pass can work. Let me clear this quickly. I have three different Ultimate Team accounts where I experiment game mechanics. So don't get confused when you see different color jerseys. So let's see why these lob through passes work around the box. One, because of the automatic offside traps. Defenses no longer fall back deep as it was in the past seasons. In FC25, they push forward, making it hard to time through passes, but around the opponent's box, when they push forward, try to trigger any movement of your off-ball player, then pass to him using the lob through pass. It works like bread and butter, and the opponent can't do anything to stop this. L1 boost is now the meta of FC25, because the stepovers which dominated the past seasons was nerfed. If you're not abusing this mechanic at the extreme, then you're not playing FC25. Every game has its broken mechanics, and good players are the one who adapt quickly and learn how to use these mechanics. To perform the L1 boost, you simply press L1 as the name states. As you're dribbling holding the L1, you release it and press R2. Here your player will burst away into the space with higher acceleration force than when he's just sprinting. This mechanic has two effective areas where you have to use it from. Number one is on the wing. Some opponents tend to always cut this pass using their fullbacks, so this opens up space on the wing. When you pass to your winger and sense this, always be holding the L1 button. And if you see the opponent's fullback rushing to cut that pass, immediately press R2 and burst into that space leaving that fullback behind. Next is the middle against the opponent's last center back. Many average opponents don't understand the basic way of positioning their defenders. They don't defend that safe area, the goal. So when you face such opponents, always use the speed boost against them, and they will have no chance of defending this. In FC25, if you don't create movements, you will struggle to attack, because attacking AI is not that good this season. One of the powerful way to create movements is the give and go technique. This passing technique sends your player forward after passing the ball. Just press both the L1 plus X and your player after releasing the ball he moves forward. The 1 and 2's passing style makes your attacking game so effective because it increases the rhythm of your passing game by giving you more passing options when moving forward. This works best on the wide area 
because some opponents are aggressive with their fullbacks, so as the opponent overcommits with his defender, use one and twos to send your winger or midfielder or striker forward. This opens up spaces in behind to exploit. Not only exploiting spaces, but also as the player you always have purpose in your passing game. And this passing technique is the meta way to master wing play style in FC25. Sometimes you have to play like a rat if you want free goals. And an FC25 scoring kickoff glitch is so easy when you face opponents who don't know how to defend this trick. Just imagine loading up a match expecting one or two free goals from this trick. Scoring kickoff glitch is so simple. You just follow like three easy steps. And one is to send your player starting the kickoff forward. As you pass to this player, use the L1 trigger and send this player forward. Then step two is wait for that player to make a run. As he's running past to this midfielder, this gives time for this player to run as you're also avoiding pressure from opponent's defenders. Last step is set up the pass, pass to this player again, and use the lob through pass aiming at this running player. And as simple as that you get yourself in behind, then lastly is to be calm and composed and finish this one-on-one -on -one finish. Kickoff glitch is some sort of rat trick, but if you want those free goals, just abuse it, and especially against the opponents who can't defend this trick. Scoring near post in FC25 is one of the effective ways to finish up your goals. This has many advantages. Goalkeepers seem not to have any chance of saving these near post shots, but you have to understand the following are important when shooting a near post. One is to use precision shots. Head to your settings and change your shooting from assisted to precision. Here you have to aim manually towards the goal side you want to shoot to. Precision shot aim is manual. But power and accuracy are very assisted. Power is boosted and goalkeepers have no chance. So shooting at the near post using the precision shot, I don't know why goalkeepers can't save these shots in FC25. They work many times. If you can't manage using the precision shooting, try to time your shots if you use the assisted shooting type. Time shot where you press the shooting button to load up the power, then press it again when your player is about to hit the ball. When you time perfect, it's green, and it increases power and accuracy, making it hard for the goalkeeper to save. And another main reason why near post shots work is goalkeeper movements. Most of the times when the opponent moves his goalkeeper, he moves him marking the far post. When your target is to shoot at the near post, you will score easy goals because the opponent will move his goalkeeper, not knowing you're shooting at the near post. Ground through passes are the most effective way to pass around the opponent's box because it's a decisive pass and around the final third you need that decisive action when creating chances. Not only around the opponent's box but also during counterattacks. Through pass is the number one effective pass you have to use in these moments. But according to the FC25, defenses are so hard to break but using the ground through pass triangle it's much effective around the opponent's box which means you have to always be sending your players forward, either using pass and move or the L1 trigger. Implementing these two habits into your gameplay, the through passing and creating movements, it will be a game changer for you in FC25. In FC25 scoring corner kicks, it's like scoring a penalty. It's very easy. You just need to follow some simple steps like aiming towards the penalty area, then selecting that corner finisher using the L1 button, loading up enough power like three bars and a half, move the corner receiver towards the edge of the goalkeeper's box, then press square to release the cross. Then the rest is to aim and score this easy goal. So just imagine you have a kickoff glitch goal, a free power shot goal because they are consistent and overpowered, then you also have an expected easy corner kick goal. Those are just three easy goals in every match. We have the full dedicated video about the corner kicks. Check the video link in the description.